Hi guys, firstly, thank you. Uh, finally hit the 1,000 subscribers. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, it's getting exciting. Now today we're tackling um, a wall that did have quite a lot of damp in it at one stage down to the, um, the customer's drain pipe outside was leaking uh, badly and it was pouring down the wall there and uh, at this stage it has actually dried out. We're taking away the largest uh, mostly affected area and what we're going to do here is put a sand cement render back in its place. Now I've cleaned the bricks off mostly there, that um, mortar you can see although it looks quite soft in the picture it's quite hard and down the side of the window uh, we've completely lost the angle I mean that was only uh, about a one inch uh, reveal on that window anyway um, with these shutters that have already been fitted in if they're taken out obviously once you've done the work uh, they're never going to go back so um, yeah and plus the customer didn't want to take those out so uh, I'm going to have to build that um, corner up as you'll see a little bit later on so we can um, get a bead onto it uh, there's no way an angle bead uh, a render angle bead would fit onto it uh, because it's just too small so a bit later on I'm going to build this up first with the, the sand and cement the corner and then I'll use a thin coat bead to uh, get the thing finished off now mostly when you're um, doing sand cement work like this you'd put a scratch coat on first and then you'd put a second coat on top of that but uh, in here we've only got about half an inch to play with um, so basically uh, I've sprayed the wall just with water a little bit of water uh, brickwork basically doesn't need to have a bonding agent on it specifically um, this is some kind of issue with the bricks and um, we're putting this coat straight on and we're going to level it out flush with the existing wall because of this this whole actual wall on this side is going to be skimmed over at the end so this is going on in one, in one coat because um, yeah if you put a scratch coat on that and let it dry uh, never leave yourself enough room to put a, a decent top coat on it always remember to work the sand and cement in right up to the edge nice and tight so you're getting a good bond between the existing plaster that's up there and your new uh, your new render coat this is a three to one mix it's quite strong but um, I like it like that Taking an aluminium uh, feverage over that just to see where we're at. But as we proceed with this, I'll be uh, reverting to the speed skin. Okay, the hollers that you've got, obviously, you fill those out. So we're doing here. Obviously you won't get them all in one go normally. You'd look at that and think, oh that'll do it. Until you take your, your all over it. Just in the lower section there. This render does have um, a decent quantity of uh, waterproofing uh, additive in it. Which also works as a plasticizer. Not, well, most of the time, anyway. But I just want to guarantee that um, no other moisture is going to come back through uh, the render coat. I mean, it shouldn't cause an issue now, anyway, because the uh, repair to the drain pipe has been made outside. But should there be a, f a future issue, um, there's no way the water's getting past this. There we go, starting to take shape. I mean, I've left most of the detail in this um, video rather than cut too much out. 
um, to speed it up or to make it a bit shorter because um, if you're part of the plastering school and you you want to learn from this video you're not just watching it for a sort of a see how it's done purely for the pleasure of it uh, viewer then um, it's good to see the technique that's used when it comes to uh, putting up your render taking off your uh, your high spots and filling in your low spots going back over again with your um, with whatever you're using to level it off I mean I've found the speed skin to be quite good initially I didn't think um, plastic bladed speed skin would be very good for um, ruling off render but um, as long as the renders a decent consistency and it's not so thick um, the stuff hardly moves then um, then uh, the old plastic uh, speed skin works really well Again, as usual, always make sure you're, you're floating it off both ways. You're rolling off from the from the bottom upwards and from the internal out towards your edge. Because when you cover this whole wall, you don't want it to be any um, kind of lump or bump where one is prouder than the other. A few shots when we come to them of uh, doing the corner, I've managed to get some close ups of that so you can see in a little bit more detail um, how I'm putting the thing on. Okay, here we go. Now you see on an angle like this, as I said, there's no actual corner there that I can pull out to. So what I'm tending to do here is getting the stuff onto my trowel and using the heel of the trowel. So you're pushing that on and you go upwards and you can't really see it in the video, but the heel of the trowel is pushed against the wall and the toe of the trowel at the top is away from the wall. So you're basically pushing the cement up the wall. There you go, using the heel of the trowel just very roughly um, getting an edge there or the beginnings of an edge you won't get a you won't get a fantastic edge straight away when you're trying to build uh, build out the stuff enough and uh, and yeah those louver <laughs> windows can be a bit awkward to say the least here we go so that's just a reverse of what I was doing at the lower the lower end and, and using the toe of the trowel, putting the stuff on and coming down and all went up on that particular case there. You can see at this point that edge is just just a rough old mess but um, there's nothing else you could do at this stage uh, that would be simple. Just a little bit more further down basically I'm building this this part of the wall up so it's thick enough to give us um, give us our reveal back basically the, the original size that it was because the, the actual angle bead that was in there had completely uh, gone rusty and was a, just a terrible mess I haven't put any music on this one guys because sometimes um, I found when I'm watching videos if they're instructional in any way after a while the music starts to grate on you a bit when you're trying to listen now at this point I've started to rub up the wall with my float 
that's a plastic float um, deviling it up that is basically it's got a little screw in the corner when you just have the tip sticking out just enough so as you're compressing the surface you're getting a nice um, scratch on it as well which is quite good to have in a when you're doing a render that you're going to put a skim over the top of again any hollow spots that you get small ones this is when they'll become visible and you can just fill those in as you rub the thing up so it's getting nice and compressed it's getting a nice scratch on it and of course it's nice and flat If you didn't rule this off and you were trying to do this with the float, you'd start knocking bits off all over the place. Just work your way over the area. Just a bit of a close up where I'm just filling those hollows. Compress them in and put a nice devil scratch on there. Now, here I've literally just pushed the, uh, the bead into the sand and cement, and so it's a loose, a loose bead. And this can be very twiddly. So, I've been doing this for years, and uh, this isn't something you'd you'd want to do as a complete kind of novice or DIY to this you need to have done a decent bit of practice with your um, your troweling skills and while I'm pushing that reveal sand and cement on you can't quite see it there I'm holding the bead from the front with my hawk in my other hand and you can see where that sand and cement is uh, starting to build up now so as I start to cover that bead up but um, as I say, that bead is just floating there at the minute, so um, you do have to be careful. It's so easy to just knock the whole thing back off again. At least we've got our reveal back. And just got to level out that uh, render across the front. As on any job you do, guys, just remember to. Uh, be really careful not to cause any damage to decor or uh, in this case these um, these blinds wooden blinds okay you can see in this bit where it's a little bit awkward and I don't want to disturb the bee too much I'm using basically quite a, a lot about four inch filling knife to build out because it is quite thick and if I start whacking um, my Marshall Town up there too soon, there's a good chance I'll knock the bead off. As I say, if it was a bigger reveal, um, you could do this slightly differently, but because it is so tight and I've had to literally build the thing back up out of sand and cement, it's um, very delicate. And here I'm taking up the side, I'm using the side of my, um, of my float to square this off. Now obviously you need to make sure it's, it's a quite a new float because once uh, the float's been worn in quite well the, uh, it doesn't have corners anymore at all, it just rounds right off and uh, that'd be useless for this part. But um, as I say, make sure if your float is fairly new, if not brand new. Just making sure now I get a decent bit of gear into the angle because you want your angles to be nice and um, straight once the job's done. I mean, if you make a bit of a boo-boo with um, bonding plaster, or you can scrape it back out if there was an issue, but um, once that sand and cement's gone off, it's not going anywhere. So you need to make sure you get that angle really nice.
at some point I can't remember it's the footage is here on this one you would um, again take as the stuff starts to go off a little bit more oh, there we go take your uh, plastic float up there a few more times and then when that is firm enough uh, you'll devil it up like you have done on the wall on the uh, on the left hand side there Now here at the top, I'm basically blending this back in so it meets the original bead that is still on the top. Because if you start sticking more beads around this, because you can probably see that uh, they want to put exactly the same poles back for their curtains. And these are quite hefty things that are here. And uh, I didn't want to mess about with trying to cut beads around, uh, around those. So. What you'll see briefly a little bit later on is where the top bead is in good nick. I've scraped, not just yet, but I will do in a minute, scrape back the uh, finish from the front surface of that, uh, that head bead on the top of the window. Because when it comes to the setting, um, I want the, the beads to all be leveled up with each other on the corners. I don't want one jutting out more than the other where they meet. And just tidy it up a bit make sure you've got no um, render that's going to go hard on the bottom of you in this room where the co-rins there oh, touch with the sponge there that's it i think that bit got a little bit too dry no i just wanted it to just to be nice okay this is quite good practice as well although i'm not just patching this i'm going to go over the whole wall um, i'm leaving this to dry until the next day so it's a good idea to uh, clean the wall off and uh, at the end of the day it just looks nicer there we go it's all about keeping your customer happy see it's quite a large a large area but it would have been pointless to go to take off any more than this because the rest was solid now again you can see that devil that pattern that's just from the uh, the devil float which is the float with the screw in it if your screw sticking in it too sticking out too much obviously you can just loosen it off a bit so it sets itself back inside the uh, the float especially if you want to do any rubbing up without scratching the surface. You see where I've got that bead to meet up with the original bead that's at the top there. And I'm going to be putting a, an angle bead on the right hand side of the window as well to blend in at the top. There we go. Lovely. Maybe I do say so myself. Okay, we're back for another day. Now, because there's a, a lot of waterproof in that sand and cement, there's absolutely no need to put any anything on top of it. All I'm PVA in here is the original plaster. I'm going to be uh, putting my finish over. So I'm just literally going up to the edges. That's it as far as PVA goes. Don't don't put the PVA onto the sand and cement. There's where I've used the chisel just to scrape back the plaster from that um, from that top bead. And that just allows enough room. For the finish to uh, go up against that but that does stick out a bit in this corner which is why i'm putting a new bead on there and this was the first time actually that i'd used uh, this mitre bond i mean, i use it quite a lot now because <laughs> it is quick when you're uh, just sticking a bead to well to something like this 
you could um, traditionally just put once you've got your finish on you'd squash it into the finish but um, it's just nice in this situation where all your beads are basically set so any finish that you put on um, your beads not going to move just got to make sure you're putting it on um, level Okay, first coat of finish going on. Again, with the PVA on the uh, original plaster wall and the waterproofer that's in the sand and cement, this basically, which is a good thing, means that the, uh, the whole set does go off at the same time. What well, you do have to be careful of on sand cement like that with a lot of waterproofer in it. When you put a skim on it, then you don't mess about to, with the skin because it will blister. If you bring too much water to the surface too quickly, because there, there'll be no absorption whatsoever in the sand and cement. Trusty bead skim plastic blade out again to rule off that finish. As I say, I've literally just put that finish on and uh, leveling it off straight away. Remember, don't ever do this with the um, with the metal blade because you'll draw the water to the surface and uh, it will cause blistering and all sorts of issues, and it'll look terrible. But the plastic one, as uh, we've discussed on Ask the Plasterer, it does um, open up the surface of the finish, which helps it to uh, pull in just that little bit quicker than it might otherwise. You can hear, as you see, when you're, you're butting up two um, wet pieces of wool, you basically might get your first one on, that's the second coat going on here. And when you're doing the return, you just basically at this point get it as neat as you can. And then, there we go, with the corner twitcher. That pushes your plaster really nicely into the angle. Well, you do have to be careful with this is it, if it's still quite wet is um, even with this um, Marshalltown twitcher that's got wide flexible wings on it uh, can still dig a groove into the uh, into the edges sometimes it'd be better to do that um, I was doing just them with the twitcher at this stage where I'm at now where I put water on the actual wall to give it a trail up now I'm going to hit this, as you probably just saw, with the metal blade speed skim. And this basically just works as a large two-handed trowel. Fantastic bit of kit. Just remember, as, as you would with a trowel, do this in all directions. It does give you a lovely, a lovely finish. As I say, it's a finish you probably could um, leave without using uh, a flexi trail on top afterwards, or your Marshall Town. And uh, it looked look fine with a coat of paint, but um, I've never tried it yet because I still like to go over this after this stage with my uh, flexi trail. It does give it that, that lovely. Uh, Silky smooth finish at the end. See, so I'm literally using this as if it was just a just a big a big trail. Yeah, if you're going to do a, a large patch like that. Even if you're just putting bonding back in it, 
to do it and just fill the patch in. Um, I think while you're there anyway, you've got to wait for the set to go off. You might as well skim the whole wall right across uh, rather than do patches. Patches look terrible. Uh, doing this and covering the whole wall obviously looks a million times better. It doesn't take any longer. And the uh, customer feels like they've definitely got their money's worth. sure any uh, walls that you're not going to plaster uh, nice and clean and now I think finally here just giving it a spray and taking the um, my flexi trowel over the top that one I'm trowel I'm using there is my ox we can see that most of their gear is easily um, identifiable by the blue handles And when I'm troweling up and spraying water on or splashing it on with a brush, I tend to work from the top and then work my way down to the bottom rather than if you start doing this at the bottom and then you go up to the top, obviously any water you're putting on there starts running down onto the bottom, <laughs> which isn't great. There you go, just get into your corner there, make sure you've got a nice neat uh, angle. There we go, finished wall. That bit of brown at the top of the coving there is just where the paint's come from, off from the coving. That's all dried out, give it a decent coat of paint. Well, you're laughing. Right guys, that's it for now. Thanks for um, liking, subscribing. Yeah, hit that like button. Apparently that's really important. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Cheers guys. Bye for now.